Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Well, I am very pleased to be speaking in support of this bill from our government, which will be delivering much needed support to Australians at a time of need. The measures in this bill are good measures that will make a real difference in people's lives. And these are changes that are made in recognition of the fact that our government understands that cost of living pressures being felt by many in our community are real and that those cost of living pressures are particularly being felt by people on lower incomes. And I do hope that that's something that those across the parliament can appreciate and can um, support our government to get this cost of living relief into people's pockets as soon as possible to support additional assistance to around 2 million Australians who do receive income support, to make sure that safety net that our country expects is there, that Australians understand is there for all of us if we need it, is an adequate safety net. And I was pleased to see uh, in this morning's news that it seems those opposite um, will, despite the amendments they're putting forward, will ultimately support this bill. That is an important move because, of course, we do know that those opposite do not have a wonderful track record when it comes to supporting those in need. Uh, plenty of people remember, indeed they cannot forget, uh, the first budget of the Abbott-Turnbull-Morrison government in 2014. That was a cruel budget that seemingly wanted to make life harder for many Australians, including those who need support the most. It included cuts to family tax benefit B. It included severe proposals impacting people under 30 on youth allowance and what was then New Start. Uh, it had changes to indexation arrangements for pensioners, a proposal to increase the pension age to 70 and cuts <coughs> to the seniors supplement. So it was their first budget. It was rightly uh, described as a horror budget. Uh, and in contrast, our government's first full year budget could not be more different. It could not be more clear where our priorities are about making sure that we are providing well-targeted cost of living relief to Australians, making sure that, that that safety net that is a part of our system, that is something that all Australians expect, that any single one of us might need to rely on at some point, is <coughs> there and that it is adequate. I do hope that, as I said, this can be supported across the parliament. Deputy Speaker, the budget handed down in early May featured as its centrepiece a $14.6 billion cost of living package, which includes not only the income support measures that are in this bill, but also a range of other measures that I do know will make a real difference in people's lives, including people in my community. And that includes our energy price relief plan, which is targeted support totalling $1.5 billion for bill relief for 5 million households across the country. Uh, including almost $380 million in my home state of Victoria. It also includes important measures uh, to relieve cost of living pressures in our history-making tripling of the bulk billing incentive, uh, focusing again on keeping those costs in healthcare down. And so the combined efforts of our, uh, effects of our efforts across single parenting payment, across job seeker youth allowance rent assistance, as well as these investments in health and energy relief, will mean that this is really the first budget in a decade that has included the needs of Australians, Australians, particularly vulnerable Australians, at its centre. That for the first time, a government has looked at Australians doing it tough and thought, well, that is something we need to address in our budget. As I said, it is a marked change, a marked contrast to the first budget we got from those opposite, and it does show the values of our government. It does show that our government understands that we are a better country when we have a strong safety net in place. And that is something to be proud of, and it's something that, as a member of the Albanese government, I am proud of. Deputy Speaker, with the amendments in this bill, the rates of job seeker, youth allowance, parenting payment, Aus study, Ab study, disability support pension, youth and special benefit will increase by $40 per fortnight from 20th September this year. And this is an increase targeted at people on some of the lowest incomes in Australia, those people who, as I said, have the greatest reliance on our safety net for support. And while these payments are automatically indexed to reflect changes in cost of living, we know that times are tough for many income support recipients who are facing financial hardship to a degree that they haven't in the past. And I, like many members uh, in this House, have heard those stories from people who are making very difficult choices 
about whether they can afford food, about whether they can afford electricity, uh, about whether they can afford their medications. Those are very real concerns for many people in our country. And those are the concerns that our government is addressing through this bill and through this budget. The measures our government is introducing will provide additional support to 1.1 million people, uh, including 12,220 people in my community of Jagga Jagga. And with this increase in the indexation changes over the last 12 months, in the past year, the base rate of job seeker payment will have increased from $642 to $733, a 14% increase. So this is over $90 more in people's pocket each fortnight to help them deal with cost of living pressures. And it equates to over $2,300 in additional support each year. And of course, we are a government who also wants to support people into work. We know that the job seeker payment, the safety net that is there, that is important, but that it is also really important for people to be able to get a job. We also know that that's not always simple, that for some people there are barriers to work and that in some cases um, being able to get and hold a job uh, is, is not as easy as it is for other people in our community. And I think we've all seen uh, over the past years with the pandemic how life can be precarious as well and things that have seen certain uh, you know, support that has been there uh, can sometimes be taken quite suddenly and we can all find ourselves in a position where we are actually looking to the safety net and to uh, payments such as JobSeeker for um, support. So that is why these measures are very important. It is why it's important that our country has this solid safety net in place and that we are supporting vulnerable Australians who need it most. In addition to this, eligible payments, including job seeker parenting payment and Commonwealth rent assistance, will also be indexed on 20th September as usual. And so this means recipients will be receiving increasing increases resulting from this bill and from indexation at the same time and to continue that assistance moving forward. Our government is also expanding eligibility for the existing higher rate of job seeker to single recipients aged 55 and over who've been on income support for nine or more continuous months. The higher rate is already an existing feature in our social security system and it currently applies from age 60. The increased level of support for these recipients, the majority of whom are women, uh, is our government's acknowledgement that older Australians do face additional barriers to work. Uh, such as age discrimination or poor health. And over the past 10 years, we have seen the proportion of mature age recipients on job seeker payment significantly increase. Uh, the evidence has shown us that 81% uh, of people aged 55 or over stay on the payment for more than a year, and over half of them are on the payment for five years or more. So uh, there does seem to be a difference in this group of recipients. These changes expand access to around 52,000 Australians aged 55 to 59, who will receive an increase of $92 per fortnight, and that includes 640 locals in my community. And that will mean less pressure on the budgets of those individuals. It will deliver much needed relief for them. Deputy Speaker, our government also knows that single parents can find it very tough to balance caring responsibilities and full-time work when they're studying or looking for work. And the balancing act for those people doesn't end when their child turns eight. Uh, as children get older, the demands of parenting, parenting don't just go away, but they do evolve. And we do know that as children do get progressively older, single parents are generally in a better position to take on more paid work. By 14, kids have typically settled into high school uh, and hopefully need less parental supervision. So with the changes in this bill, we are expanding eligibility for parenting payments single to parents with the youngest child under 14. 57,000 single parents will be better off by at least $176 per fortnight, including 735 single parents in Jagga Jagga. Deputy Speaker, we know that uh, rents are one of the biggest issues and the rising costs of rents are one of the biggest issues that many of Australians are facing at the moment. And so another measure included in this bill and in our budget is our 15% boost to the maximum rates of rent assistance. We are providing additional support to renters with the largest increase to Commonwealth rent assistance in more than 30 years. Around 1.1 million households will benefit from an average increase of around $24 per fortnight. And this includes recipients of job seeker payment and other working age payments, student payments, 
the age pension, disability support pension, family tax benefit and veteran payments. In my community, 6,590 households will benefit from these changes. And with this 15 per cent increase since May 2022, the maximum amount of rent assistance for job seeker payment recipients who are single and living on their own will have increased from $145 to $180, a 24 per cent increase. This is $35 more each fortnight to help people on low incomes pay their rent. As a package, this is a substantial investment in making sure that Australians are able to keep up with some of the cost of living pressures, in making sure that our safety net is an adequate one. And Deputy Speaker, in the lead up to any budget, there is always uh, a, a balancing act. There is always uh, a lot of work going on to try and uh, make sure that you get that balancing uh, act right. And that is absolutely what our government has tried to do in this budget, to make sure that we are providing that cost of living relief that so many Australians do need, while also making sure that we're not adding to some of the pressures in our economy. We do know that inflation is a genuine issue at the moment. We do have to make sure that our budgets are being crafted in a way to make sure that uh, we uh, are not adding to those inflation pressures as a government. And so we recognise that this is important work. It is the work that people elected us to do. It is the work that people rely on Labor governments to do. Uh, they do trust us to provide that safety net that should be there for our country. And our government is doing this in a measured and a, in a considered way. We did establish the Economic Inclusion Advisory Committee and the Women's Economic Equality Task Force. And both of these have provided really solid advice to the government, and they will continue to do so for upcoming budgets uh, and more broadly, of course, on relevant issues across government. And so I know that our government will continue to consider the advice that those groups give us, uh, and we will consider to look at these payments from budget to budget, uh, as we would for all areas of government. Deputy Speaker, Labor governments do believe in a strong social safety net which is there for all of us, for all Australians, if they need it. And our government is demonstrating with this bill that we understand that cost of living pressures are real. We understand that too many people in our country at the moment are having to make difficult choices that they shouldn't have to, that we don't want people left in a position where they are deciding whether they can have a meal, where they are deciding if they can turn the heater on tonight or turn the lights on tonight. Our government is giving targeted support to make sure that those people who are vulnerable in our community, those people who are doing the toughest, get the support we need. And we are doing this as part of a broader budget where we also support all Australians with things like energy relief, uh, with things like health, support on healthcare and supporting our GPs. We do recognise that now is a time of need in our communities and that as a government we have a responsibility to try and help people meet that need. The measures in this bill, the increases to payments, including job seeker youth allowance, disability support pension, parenting payment and rent assistance, coupled with the wider cost of living measures that are included in our budget, do bring together what is really the first budget in at least a decade to put vulnerable, and, uh, vulnerable Australians and those in need at its centre. And I do know that these changes, both to these payments and with the tripling of the bulk billing incentive with the energy relief plan will make a difference to people in my community and to communities across the country. And I again highlight the difference from the approach we saw from those opposite in nearly a decade, where, as I said, they came into government and in their first budget, in fact, proposed some very serious changes to many of these payments, which would have severely impacted uh, on many people's lives where we saw really uh, over a decade a lack of interest in supporting those Australians who do need it most and a lack of understanding of the very real consequences on how some of the decisions in this place play out on people's lives. Well, our government does understand that these are real decisions that have real impacts on people's lives and that all Australians benefit when, as a community, we support each other, that all Australians benefit when we have a strong safety net in place and that at a time of uh, high cost of living pressures, our government is doing all it can to make sure that we support those who need it most and support people right across our community.